Hey guys, so this is Ian, and today we're going to go over neural networks. So, neural networks are one form of machine learning. They're a rather complicated type of machine learning, but they have a lot of power, and there's a lot of different things they can do. So, some examples of where you see machine learning and neural networks are everything from Netflix recommendations to self-driving cars. For this tutorial, I'll be using several examples, but primarily classifying types of flowers using a neural network because that's what we'll be doing and implementing in code after this. So at a very basic level, what a neural network is, is it's a giant function. It maps an input x to some output y. In this case, for example, what we're doing is we're mapping four different variables, the sepal width, sepal length, petal width, and petal length to one output and that output is whether or not it's type of this type of flower, this type of flower, or this other type of flower. So based on the attributes of this flower, we are labeling it with some classification. Um, and neural networks are generally very good at this type of thing. Of course it does specifically depend on the problem. So if we look at our neural network right here, what we actually do is we take our input layer. So our input layer has different nodes, right? They're also referred to as neurons, as a neural network is very loosely based on a very early um, representation of the brain. So we take this input layer, and next we have a hidden layer. And what we do is we multiply our input layer by a set of synapses, or weights. So each weight is a randomized variable, um, maybe 0 0.1, 0 0.01, 0 0.2, negative 0.1. There's a, anything, anything at all. It just depends on how we initialize it. Um, we multiply it through to get our hidden layer, right? So for the first hidden layer node, we'll multiply every single one of our input layer nodes by its respective synapse, and then add those up to get the first layer in our hidden node. And we can keep doing this with each layer until we have the value of every hidden layer. And then to get the output layer, we keep um, doing the same thing. We rinse and repeat until we get to the output layer um, and get some number. Although we've left out one key thing. And the key thing that we've left out is if we do our neural network like this, we'll only get a linear transformation of the data we started with. So what do I mean by like linear transformation and why is that a bad thing? So let's think of maybe like an apple falling, right? Or a ball falling um, due to gravity. So if we kind of graph that out, that doesn't, uh, the speed of the item doesn't increase linearly, right? Um, it increases, uh, I believe exponentially um, because of acceleration is essentially what will make that nonlinear. So the graph on the left here is no good because this is not what speed would look like. Because we're accelerating, the rate at which we speed up is increasing. And because of that, we would need a nonlinear relation to map the graph on the right. So if we plot a few points here uh, at one second, two seconds, and three seconds, we can actually sort of see what's going on here and why this linear transformation won't work for this. So if we look at the first point, um, we can kind of see, because it's at 1 on the x and 1 on the y, that probably gives us a slope of 1 if we were trying to graph a line um, to get to that point. Um, if we're trying to get the second point, um, our slope's a little different. And you see if we try to plot one line for all the points, we can't really get a line that fits because it's not linear data, right? And you might think, oh, well, maybe we can fix this by adding multiple things or multiplying multiple things. But if that happens, 5 minus 3 is no different than 2, right? And 3 times 2 ends up being just 6. So no matter how many linear transformations we apply, no matter how many things we multiply, subtract, or add, we can only get um, a transformation that ends up in using like linear data, data that happens in a line. Um, so how do we account for nonlinear data, which is going to be what we're dealing with a lot of the time? And the way we get past that is using an activation function at every node. Um, in this case, we're going to use a very common type of activation function called a sigmoid function. 
um, a sigmoid function looks a little something like the graph here, uh, where no matter what type of data we put in, we get something between 0 and 1. So if we use this, this will help um, make sure we can account for nonlinear data. Otherwise, no matter how many hidden layers we have, it's no different than just having a one layer perceptron. So if we draw back out our neural network here, you can see that we actually put, like I said, an activation function in every layer except for the input layer. So now if we're doing one more example, right, um, and this time just to simplify our neural network, we're going to just use the sepal length and sepal width, and then our output will be whether or not it's of type flower A. Just one for yes, zero for no, um, or somewhere in between if it's not exactly sure, right? And we're probably never going to get exactly one or zero. We'll probably get somewhere in between. So if our data looks a little something like this, right, um, where our sepal length is 2 and our sepal width is 0.8, um, it, is, it is a type A flower. Um, however, because we initialize our weights with random values, we might get a value like 0.2, which is 0.8 off, right? Because if we should have gotten a 1 and we get a 0.2, well, we have an error of 0 0.8. So when we're taking error, though, or also we call it loss or cost sometimes, there's small differences, won't go over them now, but we usually take the loss squared error, which is the loss squared and then multiplied by 1 half. Um, and that 1 half just makes the math later easier uh, down the road. So we take that loss, right? Um, and what we do is we actually take, we graph it, and we take the derivative. And for those of you that uh, don't know calculus, the derivative is just the slope. So if we draw a line up against this point, you'll see that the slope um, is probably something about positive 2. So now that we have that derivative, if we take this weight that we call a red right now, the weight on this synapse, what we can do is we can actually change that weight based on our derivative or based on how much our loss was off so that next time we go through the neural network and pass our data through it, it will be closer to the correct answer. So if we actually subtract 2 from our weight, then it will be closer to accurate for next time. So when we're actually changing our weight, what we want to do is we want to subtract the delta loss, in other words, our derivative, times our loss. And the reason we multiply by the loss is because if we have a higher loss or we're further off, we want to change the weight more than if we aren't off that much, right? Um, so if we're up just a little, we want to change the weight just a little. Um, and if we're off a lot, we want to change the weight a lot to compensate. So we'll, I'll go through the actual math on how I get this derivative later in another tutorial, but just for now, this should be all we need to understand how a neural network actually works. So then we can do the whole thing for that first layer right there, right, with everything, all the weights between the hidden layer and the output layer. And then what we can do is back propagate, right? So back propagating is taking that error and it's essentially multiplying it through each weight going backwards instead of forwards. And that way, you know how much error each node contributed. And based on that, you can edit the weights even before the first layer. Because in the hidden layer, unlike the output layer, you don't have the predicted answer in the hidden layer yet. You don't have something to compare that to. Um, so instead, what we do is we back propagate the error, and then we have a measurement of how wrong a node is. So the math of back propagation is also something I'll do in a future tutorial, but it's a little bit complicated, uh, and we don't need to do it right now, so we'll get on that later. So now, what would happen, let's say we have a new example, and our new example, we don't know what type of flower this is, but we have the sepal length and the sepal width, and we want to predict whether or not it's a type of flower A or not. So what we can do is we can feed our data through, and we'll get a prediction, and as long as we've trained enough and our data works with this model, well, then we'll get a prediction. So that's how neural networks work. Thank you very much for watching, and definitely check out the next tutorial where we will actually be implementing one of these from scratch in Python. Thank you very much for watching. See you guys later.